Welcome to our channel. This is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab and along with my husband Chris, we do thrift flips. We take unwanted, unloved, outdated thrift store finds and then we give them new life. And on our channel, we share the process with you all. So these are some of the wooden items I run across when I'm out thrifting and I just, I thought that was the cutest little storage cubby I ever did see. I know that it's probably handmade. And then this one was given to me by my sister-in-law who didn't really have a use for it anymore and I thought that was super cute. And then always spice racks, anything for the kitchen like that coffee mug rack coffee mug tree oh my gosh so cute this one is so large it actually holds six and this little storage cabinet how nice is this extra storage is always a must and then these are just a few odds and ends that i just couldn't pass up so they'll be getting a makeover as well so i'm going to start right off by removing any of the price tags and any of the store stickers now as I'm removing those, I'm removing any of the hardware. I like to paint it separately or not put it back on. A lot of times now I notice people aren't really hanging them on the wall. They might be setting them on a counter. So I remove any of these. But when it comes to these spice racks, a lot of times that nail is something that's holding it in place. So you may, if I bent the nail, so we're going to have to re- um, tighten that back up when removing the hangers, but I just wanted everybody to be aware of that that sometimes that is something that holds the wood together Along with any of the hardware that's on the top of this box these little hangers and then the handle off the top So for this cabinet, I'm going to be removing its hinges probably replacing the doorknob one doorknob is missing and the other one is just a wood and then this had those little dowels that they rounded off and there was just a couple left. So we're probably just gonna be filling that in and just remove the rest of them. And then when it came to this, the swinging system for this door was just screwed in. So this is an easy way to take the door out and paint it separately just to remove these screws. And then now I'm going back in with some Durham water putty, just a little bit of the dry powder, a little bit of water, the consistency you want, and going in and filling up any holes that I no longer want. And then Chris is just taking his nailer and nailing that back down tight. Like I said, when I removed that hanging system, that nail was needed to keep that top piece of wood secure. So it was a little bit on the flimsy side, so he needed to tighten that back down. So to keep this roll top, easier to paint for one and keep it that it is free flowing it is way easier to take the item apart to be able to paint that separately i'm not saying it's easy to take the item apart so chris is just using a rubber mallet to hammer those sides apart so we actually had to remove the back off of this first before he could get it apart So some of these little pieces and parts needed to be sanded. So I'm so sorry, goodbye little teddy bear, but that's not the vision we have for you to fit into our ginger chick decor. Then along with these boys and these girls on these doors, good thing to have this little black and decker with that little point on there trying to get in there. Because if you think that's not raised, once you go to paint it, oh, it, it usually is when these are hand painted like this, there's just enough raised that once you paint it, that acts like a d detail. And that's not a detail we want to bring out, so we need to go in and sand it off. Especially any red. If you can get most of the red off, I always suggest that because red lots of times likes to bleed through the paint even though the scalloped edge on the top of that piece was red I'm hoping that it does not bleed through. That I have everything detagged and holes filled and everything sanded it's time to wipe everything down I'm just using some hot water and some super clean in a bucket of water. And then after everything is all dry, we are going to be using our Graco sprayer on these pieces. So we are putting them on boards and flipping them over, doing the back sides first, getting them all ready to carry into our spray room. 
So as this is standing up, can you tell how large that coffee tree is? Oh my gosh, what a great find. So we're just going in with the Graco sprayer, like I said, and then we are using that black onyx ready to use spray free from Walmart. Just absolutely love the coverage of this stuff. So all these items will be getting a undercoat of this spray. Getting to be able to use a sprayer on pieces like this is just a blessing because you all know trying to paint with a brush with all these little cracks and these little round spindles is not the easiest of things to do. It definitely makes it nice to be able to have these on boards, carry them in and out, spray one of the pieces, and then set them on a table and let them dry. Then now that they're all dry, I can flip them over and get the other side. I always think if you come here for fashion sense to our channel you're not going to get it i wear the same I paint clothes when you're spraying and i'm painting i am wearing paint i don't know about you all i am not the cleanest painter i tend to get it on my fingers i tend to wipe it on myself so look at as i'm holding this mug tree how i'm like yep i got it all over myself so if you're looking for fashion sense this is probably not the channel for you So while we were working on these pieces, I remembered the set of crate, three set of crate nesting boxes that I had, that I had put in, I'd bought from Goodwill. It was a set of three. They were new purchase goods, put them in the booth gray. They never sold. So took them out and thought, hey, yeah, I wanted to get those painted up. So when I have people ask me why I don't paint color, people don't come to our booth looking for color. So now we're on to now that all that black is dry, we're getting it painted with the Kills Paint and Primer in one in the flat white. It is so nice to have the sprayer to get into all these cubbies, though, yes, we're probably going to have to hand touch paint them a little bit afterwards, but to get the most coverage on there is just a blessing. And some of these pieces, we did not flip them to do the back. I'll just clean them up with that black onyx so as not to waste the white paint. I just want to show you that the struggles are real sometimes. These are, It doesn't always go as planned, even though I have that stacked of hockey pucks behind me that I thrifted. The spray is coming out a little bit stronger on this angle or for the white. I don't know, but it would not stand up. So, yep, there I go again, getting paint all over myself. And then it did fall over again when I was carrying it out to the table. So you just have to brush the marks off and then wait for that one to dry. 
So a lot of these pieces in this grouping are going to get some kind of a stencil, some kind of a wording. But before we do that, Chris is going to go in and distress sand them and get them sanded it nice and smooth. So he's just taking some 220 sandpaper on those edges, showing some of that natural, showing some of that black through. Just depends on how hard you press down on your sandpaper. We paint plain in the black, so we want to see a little most of that black coming through. But generally, we want our pieces to be nice and smooth. Now he's getting that little cubby box back, put back together, attaching the sides on the bottom, in the middle, and the top where he, wherever he can nail these two pe these two pieces together, he will so it's on there nice and securely. So we actually only have one of the pieces that is staying black. This little display box is just staying black. It just needed cleaned up. And so now he's running an X-Acto knife where I put that tape and that contact paper so when we sprayed it, we didn't get it all over the glass just to really so when he pulls off that tape that it doesn't pull off some of the paint that we've put on there. It's dry to the touch, but that doesn't mean it's cured rock hard yet. After getting all the edges distressed on this piece and steel wooled so it's nice and smooth, now he's just sealing that in with some Waverly Antiquing Wax, just riching up this black paint. So I'm going to start off stenciling with these three. These are pretty easy, not too big of a stencil that I'm going to be attaching to them, just to bling them up a little bit. Now this one has a place that you can hang a towel from, so I don't want, I don't necessarily know if somebody will use it for a spice rack. So I have this rub on these transfers that I had bought, and I thought I would give them a try. Well, I'm a little fond of the bees, so I'm going to be seeing if that one is a good fit for this. I think that it is. I don't think the space is smaller than this. The transfer so I'm very happy with that. I cut out the transfer so that it was as close to the design that I could. I think you might see a little bit of the clear itself so I tried to make a clean cut as I could and then now I need to remove this piece of hard plastic that is protecting it. Now before I actually adhere the transfer on I'm going to be measuring putting little pencil marks to make sure when I get this this has to be wet. I want to make sure that I have it all centered when it's already ready. I don't think I can move it much around after I have gotten it wet. So the directions for these transfers said just to immerse it in a little bowl of water for 10 to 15 seconds. And this is where putting those little pencil dot marks really come in handy. Now I can just put it right on the space. I know where I've measured so that it's centered. Just rubbing it on just a wee bit and then that top piece will come right off. Now for this taller spice rack, I just want a vintage kind of retro font of spices. I have a whole bunch of spice jars if you watched one of my latest thrift flips, I did a whole bunch of spice jars. So this one is perfect for that type of spice jar. So I just want this chunky spices. So I'm just going in and weeding it out. This one's easy to weed because the letters are big and chunky. So when I'm making my stencil, I usually always do it on the Oracle 651, the permanent vinyl. It seems, since we pre-sanded that, that seems to stick the best for us on pre-sanded painted pieces. So now I'm just going in and measuring. I cut my stencil as close as I can to the outer edge so that way I know that I, I am as centered as I possibly could be. And then I like to use the Duck brand contact paper as my transfer tape. I know there are other clear contact papers, but this one for me doesn't leave any sticky residue behind. That's why over time, these are the two products that are my go-to type of products for stenciling.
Now for that little one, I am just going to be doing this elixirs and extracts and some swirlies. I use one just almost similar to this for my essential oils in my kitchen, so that's why I am doing that. So I just deleted everything else that I didn't want out of this. This is a design from this, the store, the so what store so i just took out the pieces and parts i didn't want and just used what i did want And then here again, I cut as close to the design as I could, trying to make sure that each side of the black that I was leaving was as centered as I could get it. And then just removing it with that clear contact paper. This piece of contact paper I'm using right now is a well-loved, so it's starting to lose a little bit of its sticky, but it is nice when you're transferring. So now I'm just going on to my multi-use apple barrel and black, and I'll be doing three coats. I rather do a little bit of the dry technique where there's hardly any paint on. I don't want to smoosh it underneath that stencil. I have tried where you paint it white first and then put it, but it's just time and cost and the other paint is out in our workshop and this is what I have in our house and I know I could do a little bitty jar, but you just work and do what's best for you and what's the simplest sometimes. And then in between each coat, I'll just use the assistance of the blow dryer to blot dry it to make sure that it's good and dry before moving on to the next coat. And I'll be applying usually three coats to achieve the darkness that I'm looking for. I also like to use that blow dryer to heat that vinyl back up to re reactivate that sticky so then when I pull the vinyl off, my stencil off, it doesn't pull off any of the tape. And on this one, it did just a wee bit and I will touch that up, but I usually go back in with a boutonniere pin and grab those little bitty pieces and parts. That's what works best for me. So see, yep, I did have to go out with a, I just went out with a paintbrush and stuck it in the gallon jar of the Kills paint that we have out in the shop. And sometimes that happens. So on the cubby, I was not quite sure what I wanted to do. Did I want to put an image? Do I just want to put a word? I think it. this item already speaks for itself. I didn't want to put too much bling on it. So I'm just going in with this fun cursive font and just typing out the word storage and doing it on the flat part. And remembering when you're doing a cursive font to weld it together before cutting. So same thing, just transferred it. We using the contact paper, made sure that everything was good and rubbed on. I cut this one a little bit close to my swirly, so I'm going to have to add a little bit of masking tape so I don't accidentally paint the door. But I absolutely think that this is just the perfect accent, not too much. Now for this cubby box, it had designs in the background. If you remember the back of it had designs. Oh, I'm not going to try to do that at all. That is, would be not worth the money spent on this piece. So I'm actually going to be stenciling on the side of this piece. I can imagine this being one of those promotional things. I'm still doing some farmhouse in my booth. And I still live in a farming community, so stuff like this sells. So I just went into my design studio. I found this. This is actually a pieces and parts of a design and I wanted to fill the whole side up so it's nice and big. Now on this box, even though we sanded it smooth, it has lumps and bumps and highs and lows. So when I am doing my stencil color on it, I'm not going to try to fill that in. I'm going to be distressing this piece anyway. I'm still going to do this three layers of the black to achieve the darkness. But if I would go in there and try to squish paint into those little holes, all I'd be doing is taking a chance of squishing it underneath my stencil.
Sanding after your stencil is a personal choice. This is already distressed because of the piece itself. So I'm just going back in and distressing just a little bit more. I'm not taking the image off. I'm just making sure that I get a little bit more distressing to match up with those holes, those little valleys that was there. Now for this box, I had just done a tray riser in one of my last videos that I did a check pattern on. So I had an idea of doing a gingham check, not the buffalo. I thought maybe the gingham check would be a little bit, you know, it's kind of fun to spice it up. I do a lot of green sack and I thought, why not try some checks? So what I'm doing here is I'm making three dots, one on the top, one on the bottom, one in the middle, and I'm centering because I want my first piece of tape to start out centered. Just so for me, it would be pleasing to the eye. You could start off at one side and work your way over, but you might end up with a half a piece here or there. So for me, I just want to start in the center. So that's where I'm laying my first piece of Dollar Tree masking tape. And now I'll put another piece of tape right along the side of it, just a little piece, just to add as a guide. So I'm going to butt that right up. And then after I get that piece down, I'll pull out another longer piece. And then I will put another little piece after I straighten this piece out and butt that one right up against the next one and then work my way down. And then I like to go back through and really rub on my tape, pushing it down in any little crevices, any little cracks that I need to just to make sure that it is good in here. So yes, I am actually not painting this gray or black. I'm actually using that chalk paint from Waverly in the mineral color. I like the tray, but I was afraid that that gray kind of hid the design a little too much. So I thought I would try this mineral that I've been using on crockery stamps or with crockery stamps. So sorry, I had to go back through. I'm like, oh shoot, I forgot to tape off my masking tape off my edges. So I had to go back through and do that. And now you just get to watch the speed process of me painting the stripes. Of course, I can't wait for paint to dry. I have to use the blow dryer to dry in between coats. So now I'm trying to find my vertical center point. So I'm just measuring this out, putting my little dot, and that's where I'll start my first piece of masking tape again. So I wanted my next stripe for those overlapping squares to really pop, but after I watched somebody on YouTube and Pinterest it, nobody really told me any directions of, I probably should have added a little bit of white to one of these colors. So next time I do this, I, that's probably what I will do to lighten up that color, but that's okay. I think I'm just gonna go in and heavily distress this piece so it doesn't look like I just painted white blocks. So now this is a this piece of course is a box so it's longer than it is high so i'm going i really like this type of wreath that way it has that open top on it now you all don't think that i hand sanded that much i did take it out to the shop and use the orbital sander on that to really get it distressed so now i am doing this in reverse flipping my box so you can all see at this angle do you guys like this angle that i'm trying to been trying to video i think you get the best views on it so i same thing i did with this i still had that center dot from that pencil mark that i left because i knew i was going to want to center this so that's exactly what i'm doing all those little pieces and parts i did not show the struggles of weeding this <laughs> some some items weed a little bit more difficult than other items and yep that well-loved contact paper it comes in handy it's still en just enough to hold my vinyl down the same thing i'm going to be doing three coats of that apple barrel in black using a blow dryer in between and just that dry where there's not a lot of paint on that makeup sponge
And when I was doing that wreath, that open topped wreath, I knew that I wanted to put my cow in there out of the IOD stamp. So when I was measuring that out, I didn't want to share with it before. I wanted to surprise you what I was going to be putting in the middle. So yep, I'm going to be putting that cow in here. So I've well loved my cow already that it is not sticky for the block either, but a lot of people out of one of my last videos gave me some tips that I'm going to try to get these guys re-stickied. I'm just showing you that I'm using the stays on ink pad to ink it up. I did end up sitting it on my island countertop to get it all, but I just wanted to show you because you wouldn't see behind the box. So I may be holding my breath just a little bit going, don't fall on my hands, don't fall out of my hands. <laughs> do you all do that too? Like, oh, I just I just want you to stay as a clear stamp. I eyeballed it, I had to center, I had to adjust my hold and then just trying to press it firmly without making it slide. And I know you're all eyeballing that space underneath that cow in between the wreath, but I did have a plan. I do have these ABC stamps that I got from Amazon and I'm going to be stamping out cow and they are sticky enough to stick to my acrylic block so good thing I have some little squares to center that cow perfectly just making sure it's level though so since the ink and the apple barrel paint is a little bit different in color as the stamping is a little bit lighter so I'm just going to go in and distress and take down the sharpness of the black on this so the black isn't overpowering the cow so now I have this little cabinet to finish up so I'm going to be using IC Paris stamp set that ha I, I, I tell you I like those bees so yep I'm going to go for a little bee on the IC Paris so I thought he fit perfectly right at the top of this, that little fun detail at the top of this. And then these are some really old stamps that I had from Stamping Up. They came from a stamp set and they're the little honeycomb pieces. So I thought that would just be nice accent. So I can't link anything. I don't even know if Stamping Up sells them anymore, but I just thought a little something something on these doors, not too much. Just pulling with the honeycomb pieces, seeing what I think is pleasing to my eye. Like I said, I don't want to do the whole door. I just want a little bit in the corner. And then I figured out my acrylic block and the back of these were still sticky. So I was able to grab them. That way I could keep them centered. And then using that same stays on ink to get them all inked up. And then here is where I made my mistake. I'm like just stamping away, thinking I'm all cool and all that, that I can get this all centered. Oh no, I put it in the wrong corner. We'll come back to that in a minute. So let's do our cute little bee. I've got him all centered, gonna put him on the acrylic block. I'm going to get him all inked up and applied. And I decided I could do a little more. The wreath around this bee was too big. It would not have fit. So I'm just going to use that bottom wording and go underneath the little bee that I just put on there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get it all inked up. And then above it, just in case I might have touched a little bit with ink, I'm just going to run a piece of masking tape. That way I don't, don't have to take off anything that I didn't actually not want. So the mystery of, I really should have showed you this on camera. So what I did, I just took some rubbing alcohol that stays on ink, comes right off with alcohol. There you go. I've done that on the crockery stamps before when my image was not straight or blurry. It just, it does, it wipes right off. So then I let it dry. I sand it just a wee bit and then I go back in and um, touch up the paint that way. Yeah, I think the stays on supposed to be permanent, but I guess I'm glad it's not permanent that I have to seal it in because if I make a mistake, I can wipe it off. I'm going back in because you see, can see the ones that I hand sand stamped. They are definitely darker than the ones that I had put on that block. I 
I don't know why I didn't do the second time. I just wanted to make sure I was doing things right, but it just happens. But I always say that's why it's the perfectly imperfect of a DIY. You know this is a handmade item, that personal touch. So to finish up this picket fence cute little planter box, to fill that whole planter would be not cost efficient. Florals are way too much, but in my hoard, I love a terracotta pots. I have quite a few, so I cleaned these up from my garden shelf. So let's call those free. And then I'm just gonna be doing that baking soda and paint textured just on the outer side just to bling them up a little bit yeah i could have left them terracotta but it's nice to color and the mineral has been selling for me that kind of color so i'm going to go ahead and paint the outside of these terracotta pots with this baking soda and mineral chalk paint it's equal parts just to give it a little bit of a texture paint just to just to add something a little bit unusual to a terracotta pot for our booth and unlike the ones that I did that were canisters or storage utensil holders, I didn't feel the need to sp pre-spray terracotta pots since it is so absorbing. So I am going to add two coats where the terracotta kind of sucked it in, which was perfect because I know that it's going to stay on. I don't think they'll be handled too awful much, but I did water down my second coat just a little bit to make sure that it goes on a little bit more smooth and that it's not grabbing the first coat off. So to seal this chalk paint in, I'm going to be using some of this Rust-Oleum and Clear Matte, and I'll be spraying it outside because it's smelly stuff. Now I want to bling this box up just a little bit, but I got to be careful for cost because once you put florals in there, I have to know what I'm going to be able to sell it for and that I don't want to put too much more money into this. So I just used those same alphabet letters, got out the letters for the word flowers and just perfectly fit in that center part of this box. Well, that's the unevenness that would probably wasn't level, but the acrylic block is so I'm just going to take my letter letter e off try to eyeball getting it centered on that where it missed picking it up I'm sure that it's just that the wood was uneven I really pressed hard it just happens that's part of DIY crafts so the nice thing about these being free pots I used minimum paint on that and now I'm using the Dollar Tree floral foam I love this stuff love that i have a dollar tree that carries it or i have a dollar tree that i can get and i don't ever glue mine in i put that foam in there nice and tight it usually doesn't ever move so as you see i just pack it right in and then i like to put my spanish moss in before this is that dried grass that you found at the dollar tree i'm still working off this bucket that i had thrifted for a couple bucks I absolutely love that so i like to just stick that right in tuff it in any of those little tuck it in any of those little spaces that I had that way when I'm putting my floral in I know it's going to stay yep if you were guessing it was going to be lavender yep you were right I'm still working on my last year tour that I picked up that smaller lavender I just couldn't pass it up anytime I was at a Walmart so that was a dollar 47 and then this bigger one for the three something at Walmart also so I'm gonna mix the two together and I'm going to try just to use one of these in each one and a little bit of the other I do have an extra one in case I want to fill it I always suggest a good pair of nippers I've had these ones for years absolutely they've stayed sharp and just makes it easier to cut the stems of these florals down I like to keep quite a bit of that that stem because it's wired and that's what will stick inside that foam so when it comes to doing florals i want them to look full but i have to keep it cost efficient because florals are not cheap <laughs> and these are reasonably priced i have to say so i'm going to try to just get the two spread out and then add that third more expensive one in so i'm taking that 
lavender that has the two stems on it, putting that as height in the middle. Then I'm cutting off that bottom piece that only has two, and then I'm putting that top piece around all four sides. And then I'll go back in with the one that's left with just the two around all four sides. That way I'm getting, I'm filling this all up. It's all wired, it's all gonna be sticking in that foam. I don't feel any need to hot glue any of it in. Now when it comes to cutting on this, I have to eyeball where I don't want that to be taller than what I already put in. I, that first piece that I put in is my center point where I'm working around. So I'm making sure that I get wire, making sure that I am keeping it a little bit shorter. And I'm going to stick about three of these lavender sprigs in. And then I'm going to go back in and take some of that greenery that I left behind. I'm not wasting any of this greenery. And that's what's going to hide some of that Spanish moss grass. And that's what is going to make it look full by cutting off those little pieces at the ends you know we crafters we don't waste anything And then I thought just for fun, I remembered in my hoard, I have a few sets of these little gardening tools that are just small. They're just for decor pieces. I'd put them in my booth last year, but who knows, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic still. So I'm, <laughs> they didn't never sold. So I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna add these to the back of that picket fence, hot gloom, but I don't like the color of the handles. So I'm just gonna go in with some ink, Waverly chalk paint, paint it all black and then spray it with that Rust-Oleum to seal it in and add these. So a little bit of decor in the back of that picket fence. Now everything that I have stamped, everything that I have stenciled on is going to get a clear coat. So I'm just using this crystal clear acrylic spray. It doesn't really matter which one you use. I have the Rust-Oleum also, but any of them, please do them in a ventilated area. They are smelly. Then after that is dry, if need be, and I think that they're shiny, I might take a little bit of sandpaper just to buff that shininess off. Other than that, they're all getting now sealed with the Verithane finishing wax to finish them up. I almost forgot that this one needed to have it knobs put back on. They were just knobs that were glued, so there wasn't any previous holes that we had to fill. One was missing. I guess I completely forgot until I st stood it up and the doors kept opening up on me. So Chris is pre-drilling some holes so we can replace the knobs. And what a perfect opportunity to get to use these two glass knobs that I've never been able to use on anything else. They, the hexagon matches that honeycomb perfectly. So the one thing he is adding also are these little magnets that keep your doors shut also. We buy a pack off of Amazon. This is definitely gonna help keep the doors so they don't keep coming back open. So he has to, <laughs> we have to have two because the doors are separate. So he ha ran across this little punching tool and I thought, oh my gosh, I have to share this with you. If you don't have a drill, he actually pushes it into the wood. It pre-drills that hole or pre-punches that hole. I thought, oh my gosh, I have to share that. I've never seen such a tool. So he's just figuring out how to get it on the back of the door, keeping it even, using that metal piece. That's why I let him do what he's doing, but I'm like, hey, I think I, I could pre-drill a hole, but this punching tool is very cool. I just had to share it with you all.
So I thank you so much for watching today's video and what was your favorite and did we inspire you in any way to look at thrift store finds in a new way. I thank you so much for watching today's video and if you are part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new to our channel and checking out the content for the first time, please consider hitting that subscription button along with the notification bell. Thanks again for watching.